you have a huge, I mean, you were honored and welcomed into the, the, the Cheyenne Arapaho tribe. Yes, too, I was right? adopted on Labor Day 1984. Yeah. When I was, in, when I was uh, named to the court, there was a newspaper article by Charles Jones. And he asked me questions. It was, I thought it was a really good interview, but I, he said, what was your childhood dream? And I said, I always wanted to be an Indian. And one summer, well, in the summertime, I would always go down to the powwow grounds, and they were still, the drums were still playing at night, and my mother would retrieve me. And when I was adopted into the Cheyenne Arapaho, we had a dance, and you give away things to honor people that have honored you. And so after it was over, I went over to her and said, well, what do you think? And she said, well, you still haven't learned how to dance. And it was, and it was because she retrieved me all the time that I didn't ever learn how to dance. Yeah. Anyway, the day that, I was, that, that my, my uh, announcement was made in the paper, I got a call from uh, Chief Big Snake in the Native American Center, and he said, the phone is ringing off the wall. Everyone says they want to adopt you, but I've told them that because you grew up with the Cheyenne Arapaho, that you belong to them. And I did, and yeah. I do. Well, so growing up then, going to the powwows and stuff, what is that just something that was around your hometown growing up? You were very aware of it, and it was... Oh, yes, Colony is the oldest town in western Oklahoma. Okay. It's been there within four or five miles of downtown Colony is an archaeological site mm -hmm. that's been there since the year 1000 or 1200. So the tribes have always been... It's a Cadillan site, not a Cheyenne Arapaho site. Okay. In fact, my friend Jerry Redcorn, and I hope she gets inducted to the Hall of Fame because she deserves it. She is an incredible potter who grew up on that archaeological site, picking up pottery shards out of the cotton patch. Yeah. And, and Colony was established by John Seeger for the Cheyenne Arapaho for a vocational trade school when the federal government decided they'd just round up people and turn them into farmers. The Indian agent wrote a letter said he think it would he thought it would take about five years, mm -hmm. really. But Colony was a part of the Cheyenne Territory, and they had the run in 1892. And then John Seeger had already been there. He said when he saw at the top of the hill down to Cobb Creek that he had seen the Promised Land. We just call it the center of the universe at Colony. But that was, a, my, my daddy's mother died when he was six months old. And my great grandfather hired the Cheyenne women to be his nannies. And I have a great picture of him with Howling Man Woman, this little blonde boy being held by her. And so he, my daddy had such great affection for those women and for, and for the tribe. Uh -huh. And during World War II, or at the end of World War II, when they came back, they had a powwow to honor the veterans. And Daddy danced in with them. And I'm sitting on the front row on these just kind of wooden benches with these women. And they, they were so proud of Daddy. And they looked at him and they said, oh, look at Johnny. He can still dance. And he could. I can't. Yeah. That's, I mean, to see that, right? To grow up and see that and have that experience at such an early age and then be mm -hmm. welcomed in as well. I mean, that's, that's a huge honor. I mean, it's... When we were dancing in Red Earth in one of the first Red Earths, Barbara Poe was in charge of the parade and some other things. She's no longer with us, but... Again, I can't dance, and I, I, <laughs> we're, we're dancing in, and you know, with the, the dignitaries. And I said, you know, I'm, I want to stand by you because you know I can't dance. And she said, we don't care that you can't dance or that your feet in, aren't in the right spot. Your heart is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've taken some comfort from that. 